Dan from Meyerland, Texas, well, he's in need of some reinsulation advice. He is. He's uh, talking about attic insulation in particular here, Tom. Dan writes to us, I have a quote recommending I spray on foam that's applied to the underside of the roof as opposed to spraying fiberglass or cellulose on the floor of the attic and replacing the bats on the walls. Could you give me the pros and cons of this type of insulation? I've never run across this and none of the other companies had this kind of suggestion. Because it's a bad suggestion. <laughs> <There>. So <laughs> the other companies he ran across probably gave him better suggestions. I don't know what they are. They might be even more bizarre. Well, here's his question exactly for the attic. Um, the bats we'll get to in a second in the walls. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, but it says either foam sprayed to the rafters, which is above the head, which makes no sense at all, or cellulose insulation. It's blown out onto the floor of the attic. I wouldn't use either. My recommendation, and I stick very strongly to it, is I would use a blown-in insulation on the floor of the attic. Uh, in Meyerland, R30 is going to be your starting point. R38 would be your ending point. You don't need to go beyond that. You always have a little range. It's not a big deal. But after that, you're just throwing away your money. So R30 to R38, formaldehyde-free fiberglass insulation is what you want to put in there. It's going to be lots. It's going to be nice and fluffy, and you can put it on top of whatever's in the attic already. Stay away from cellulose. It turns real dusty and deteriorates over time. The foam, then you get into a whole bunch of other issues with moisture problems, uh, dehumidifying attic spaces, not knowing if you ever have a roof leak. Uh, you have to seal up all your attic ventilation systems, it, and sometimes you even have to acclimate the attic. It gets to be a mess. So. Keep it simple. It works. Formaldehyde-free fiberglass insulation. If I had a picture myself, I could show you my own attic, and you would see it in mine. As well as the walls, formaldehyde-free fiberglass. We call it batting in the walls. Blankets go on in, up in the attic, but this would be bat, uh, bats in the walls. An R13 in the walls, R30 to R38 in the attic. Keep it simple. Keep your attic ventilation and... If you don't have it and you really want to consider it before you blow in the insulation, it's up to you. I think it would be a great choice. A spray-on radiant barrier on the underside of the roof decking where they want to spray that foam. I'd rather see you have a radiant barrier. And that's another disadvantage real quick is if you spray foam, you omit the fact that you can have a radiant barrier. It won't work with the foam up there. Yeah, I don't I don't get the idea of spraying the foam. I mean, it, it, whatever. I, I, I'm not going to, I don't. You're the expert, but well, no. They what they do is they get, they punch numbers. It's a lot like numbers you get about stuff from politics or COVID vaccines. Fifty-seven here, forty-seven percent there. They they do is they pick these numbers. But in the construction industry that I'm in, you have to use common sense. What is the overall best for your pocketbook for your health? for the house, but you can take a box and you can do all kinds of research on a box and then say, well, we'll do your home like this. It doesn't relate. You have to, you got to get out of the box once in a while and think about the whole picture. And that's what a lot of people don't do. And that's why we're fighting our environment so much. Mm -hmm. This works with the environment. You know, and one other thing before we, we, we land this plane in particular, I always hear you say that formaldehyde free fiberglass. Isn't yes. all home ins ins insula fiberglass insulation formaldehyde-free these days? No. That is one product that did not require it because it's not in the living space. The formaldehyde-free products. Now, you might have uh, heard about some of these wood floors that came through and they were labeled formaldehyde-free. They met California standards. That company got in all kinds of trouble because they were putting labels in China on that were wrong and didn't actually meet those requirements. That's because it's on the inside of a house where people live. So products like furniture and uh, uh, carpeting and things like that, you've got to have certain standards. It's not formaldehyde free, but it'll be certain levels that they can reach. Although in some states like California, it has to be free. So you do have standards that you have to hit. But when it comes to insulation products and things, no, there's no standards there because they're considered to be in the attic or in the walls where it's not going into the house. Probably the only thing that's free in California. 
Um, you got a question? I have a son that lives there, yes. and he says it's good, Dad. You just have to walk, not trip over people on the street. Okay, Ask, <laughs> click on the Ask Tom button, send it your way. We'll post a video on here about home improvements. Um, you'll find them uh, every day. Post a new one every day. Post at homeshowradio.com. Um, our Facebook page, our YouTube channel. If you miss a day, you'll miss a lot because Tom has a new idea for you every day.